Okay, and we're live. Hello, Native Path family, Dr. Chad here, and I am super, super excited for today. With me here is Dr. Don DeSovia, and we're gonna be talking about the importance of gut health. So if you're someone who's looking for answers to your health challenges, and maybe the conventional approach hasn't resolved your issues, if you're frustrated, if you're not sure what to do, Dr. Don is the type of doc you wanna be paying attention to. So I'll give a quick bio, and then we can dive into today's topic. So Dr. Don DeSilvia is a nationally recognized family medicine doctor and founder of the Center for Whole Health, an integrative and functional medicine practice in West Los Angeles, California. Prior to opening her center in 2013, uh, where she is bridging the gap between the kind of healthcare we have and the kind of healthcare we should have, she trained and served on the faculty at UCLA. She believes through earlier detection of disease risk and a wide range of effective treatments that are not currently discussed within conventional healthcare. We can greatly impact and influence our health for the better. It is her mission to bring forth the most advanced diagnostic tools and interventions in order to support her patients' most vibrant and optimal health. Dr. Don, welcome to the show. How are you today? Yeah, I, I am super excited. I, this audience knows a lot of the frustrations I've had with conventional healthcare. You know, growing up and as a, a doctor of physical therapy the past 15 years in that system and seeing a conventional system that's focused more on disease and not so much on health, focusing on, on symptoms rather than getting to the root of the problem. So um, to, to come in contact with a doctor like you who has that appreciation, we're super honored and so, so grateful for your time. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It has to evolve. It has to evolve for sure. So I was thinking um, the first thing we might want to discuss is uh, that distinction between what functional medicine is compared to conventional medicine? Because I know that term functional medicine might be new to a lot of people. Maybe we start there. Like what is functional medicine compared to conventional medicine and what got you into functional medicine? body's screaming with something. And um, this gives us a way, I always like to tell people, we wanna listen to the body when it whispers to us, not when it screams. Mm -hmm. Because the body will get louder and louder in giving us signals if something is out of balance. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. again, this, this provides not only a framework for hearing people's stories and listening to them more fully, and helping them listen and understand what their body is trying to say to them with these oftentimes very uncomfortable symptoms, um, but then also doing more sophisticated diagnostic testing because a lot of times people will feel fine and we do some of these tests and I would say this is why we do these because there's things that are brewing here that you may have never known about and we can catch this early and, and start to modify and, and create greater health. Yeah, it's so, so important. Um, so let's talk about uh, gut health. You know, gut health is yeah. something that growing up with my doctor, my family doctor never once 
ever told us anything about gut health. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so, sometimes I've heard that it doesn't make any sense. There's nothing going on. But wh why is gut health so important? You know, well, it's so interesting because Hippocrates, the father of, of medicine, actually said thousands of years ago that all disease starts in the gut. Mm -hmm. And then it was in 1970, Michael um, Gershon, a neuroimmunologist, started doing research and found how we make more than 80% of our immune cells in our gut. So, and what we are learning more and more is that our immune system is not only responsible for protecting us against bacteria and viruses, but it's responsible for surveying our body for cancer cells. And, and it, it really is our protection. Our immune system is constantly looking for what may be in our body that is foreign or harmful and wants to protect us from that. And so having this vitality, intelligence, strength, health in our gut is, is really important. Yeah, I love that you made that distinction between gut health and how, it, how it's connected to immunity. You yeah. know, a, lot, a lot of people don't quite make that, that connection. So it's really, really important to understand that. Um, mm. Can you explain a little bit about what, what is it that's disrupting the health? Of, of so many people's guts. Yeah, so I, I really start with two questions. I say, what is in excess in the body that shouldn't be there that we need to start to remove? And what are you deficient of? So mm -hmm. what is one and what's harmful to us are the three T's, toxins, trauma, and thoughts. So, mm -hmm. so we really have to to look at all of those. And one of the things that I start with gut health that also isn't really talked about that much is that what we are having a hard time digesting emotionally and mentally will create a physical impact. So we, we really, I invite that question with people um, to start to entertain what is it that may be in my belief system, that may be in my experiences that are just really hard for me to digest and giving people ways to support that, whether it's therapy or church or community or art or that we have to have ways to start to be able to digest our emotional lives and our, our mental lives. So that's key. So yeah, it's completely, it's looking at the whole human, right? Yeah. And, yeah, and the between the thoughts we're thinking and the feelings we're feeling and how yeah. that impacts the entire system. Yeah. You know, absolutely. Yeah. And so just that, bringing that up is something a lot of people don't even, don't even they do. They don't. And, and especially right now, I mean, people have so, we're, there's so much that's really challenging right now. And to really let people know that there is hardcore science that what we are thinking, what we are feeling has a direct impact on our physiology and our immune system, our gut health and our digestion. Yeah, so, yeah. so let's you know start with acknowledging that, talking about that, and and getting really creative about ways that we can start to um, support ourselves in that. So then, once we do that, then we can start to look at the physical things, the the toxins, and this can be in the form of. Um, you know, chemicals, additives in our foods. Again, our immune system is constantly looking for what's foreign. And we're going to see these molecules that our biology has never seen and think that that's a virus and mount an immune response. So this is going to just create a lot of inflammation happening in the gut. So the toxins that we may be processing in the chemicals in our foods, bugs also are, are toxic, you know, mycotoxins, parasites, um, you know, different bacteria that come, um, that, that can populate the gut. So we need to look at that. So that's why doing stool tests are really important because these are things that um, Western medicine, again, doesn't have the sophistication or utilize the, the sophistication of a lot of the tests available to detect some of the imbalances or microbes that may be happening that are causing inflammation in the gut. Mm -hmm. um, is the yeah. test or is a stool test like a conventional stool test different than something that you may do? 
It is. So I use companies, um, Dr. Stata, Genova. These are companies that have really um, create just a, a greater level of sophistication and testing. So we pick up a lot more than just um, a stool test that you might get at, at your regular doctors. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And you, you mentioned foods there and how that can yeah. negatively impact the gut. What specifically does this processed foods um, do to the gut? And are there certain foods that people just, if they're having any health issues or even they're trying to be proactive in their health, they should just avoid? Yeah, yeah. So really anything processed that has, you know, probably more than five ingredients <laughs> or ingredients that you can't pronounce is a good place to start. You know, we really want to get back to eating whole organic foods, you know, fruits and vegetables and grains and, um, you know, organic meats. And that's that really needs to be the staple of our diet. And and sugar is another one that just creates a lot of disruption. And again, it's it's really hard right now because people want, you know, comfort food and mm -hmm. that's what they go for. But you did a great podcast a, a couple of weeks ago where you were like, just don't bring it in the house. Like, yeah. just keep it out of the house. And goodness, we had Halloween coming. So get, <laughs> get you know, let's, let's get some nuts, you know, get just yeah. really like, in, you know, if, if there's, you know, and pick one thing, you know, maybe if you're really overwhelmed, you know, I would say start with sugar or, you know, do, you know, say, you know, on weekdays, I'm not going to, and one of the ways to do it too is it could be really overwhelming. So I, I recommend people like cook a batch of food over the weekend and they can freeze it and have good stuff available. Um, there's lots of different ways to go about it, but yeah, we, we just really need to eat from the earth and not from um, a factory. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like I always say, like, don't don't bring bad food in your home. Really, your decision to be healthy and the actions that you take to be healthy start when you go to the grocery store. And you can choose yeah. what you in that shopping cart or not. Because the thing is, if we have some of those hyper palatable foods with lots of sugar and, and toxic ingredients, um, our bodies and our mind, they're like no match for those foods because we literally yeah. have food scientists that's their job is yeah. to eat foods that are hyper palatable to the brain and absolutely you can't stop it, eating it there's there's research that shows sugar is more addictive than heroin and then you add the stuff that they put in it that actually is makes it even more addicting and yeah. so you know it, it becomes empowering for people to say i'm not gonna i'm not gonna buy that game i'm not you know yeah I, yeah they don't have to play that game <laughs> that's what yeah. everybody it's 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 not easy and 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 to i rec i always recommend and again what's so powerful about what you're doing is you're creating a community of people you can't you can't do it alone you know and 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 for people that have families you know there's a lot of resistance in the family to to buy into that but <laughs> yeah. i have you know there's so many ways and there's so many great alternatives right now sneak it in and they'll never know <laughs> oh. just substitute and yeah 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 once they feel good they, they, then they get oh, it <laughs> yeah then they get it so yeah. are, there, are there certain foods that would uh you know we, there's certain foods we should avoid for gut health to improve it but are certain other certain foods we should bring absolutely in absolutely so you know, gut? So, you know, one of my favorites for years is bone broth, but that's, you know, again, why I'm so inspired with what you guys are doing, because your collagen product is incredible. So, so what happens when the gut gets inflamed is normally we want to have these what's called tight junctions. So, you know, it, it's, it's like a very good defense of being able to bring in nutrients that keep toxins and bugs out. So when we get inflamed, those start to open up. And we get what's called that leaky gut syndrome and all of this stuff can get through that just makes it worse and worse and worse. So what we want to do is we want to start to heal that and bring these back together and collagen, particularly your guys' collagen is just so exceptional that it actually starts to heal that and bring that back together and fortify the integrity of your first line of defense in your body. Mm -hmm. And so, so that, that's really key. And, and just to geek out on the science a little bit, 
collagen is really rich in, in two amino acids, glutamine and glycine. And again, I give this to my patients as a supplement, but I, I always like to just do it in, in food-based products if I can, because there's so many other great benefits to collagen. Mm -hmm. And so the, the glutamine and the glycine are, are key to sealing that gut lining as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the, the integrity of the gut lining, when, when the gut lining loses its integrity, what kind of symptoms might show up in a person who has compromised gut function? Yeah, so I mean, the obvious ones are gas, bloating, diarrhea, constipation. If it's severe, they can get, you know, cramping and distension. Um, but again, it doesn't always, a lot of people don't have gut symptoms, but they'll have eczema or anxiety or insomnia or um you know more serious diseases you know i have people with with cancer and and some serious autoimmune processes um that say their gut is fine but again then they're they're a lot of people either are disconnected from some of the subtler messages of their body or they're just so resilient they're just going all the time and so it, it took their body kind of really screaming at them with a more serious disease. And then we do the stool test and they're like, I had no idea that, you know, my microbiome was completely out of balance. Um, and again, for people who don't know, we have, we have more bacteria in our gut than we have our own cells. Our, mm -hmm. our health of our gut requires an incredibly diverse population of bacteria. And what happens again when it gets inflamed is that diversity goes down and we lose um, the proportion of good bacteria to bad bacteria. Mm. So, so these are things that are picked up on the stool tests that aren't done in regular conventional doctor's offices that again, you know, when someone who's really sick, we go back and we do their stool test and we see, you know, a very low microbiome. We can see, are they digesting their food? Do they have the food supply to feed the gut, you know, all of these things we can get information on that's very valuable. Yeah, it's very much like the gut is the root of so many issues. Yeah. And it looks like there's all these different issues going on and we have to treat the symptoms of all those different issues. But yeah. if you fix the gut, you start fixing a lot of things. You a know? lot of things, a lot, yeah. When, um, when I was in physical therapy school, I started to get these issues on my hands and my feet. They would break out in, in like cracks, like paper cuts. And, uh, and I kept putting band-aids on them and they wouldn't go. <laughs> where I couldn't walk barefoot because I mean, it was, it was just like, it would hurt so bad and I couldn't work on patients manually. So I started, uh, I went to the doctor, conventional doctor, and they gave me steroids. They gave me topical creams. This went on for seven years. For seven years, I, I had pain in my hands and my feet. And uh, then I started learning about the health of food, the importance of food and gut health. I completely changed my diet. And within one month, all my skin issues went away. And I, I made the connection yeah. between my gut and my skin. And that changed my entire paradigm on all the other issues that people are facing with health, like heart disease and cancer and diabetes and autoimmune yeah. issues, yeah. all come back to the gut. You know? yeah, that's such a great story, Chad. I mean, and, and perfect that, you know, that's unfortunately what Western medicine does literally puts band-aids on these very painful signals. You know, you were bleeding, you were having, you know, these very painful things. And, you know, Western medicine was just, you know, suppress it with steroids, put a band-aid on it. And, you know, lucky for you and, and all of the people who are following you right now is we're here to say there's you don't have to go seven years. And if you have, I'm sorry, but we can yeah. still, you know, let's yeah. let's start to change the tide here. Yeah, I think it, it brings up a lot of hope too that it, it can this, the fix can be a lot more simpler than, than you may think. It just getting to the root of the problem, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's, that's what I talk with people about too. I mean, I'll have people, so, you know, dairy and gluten can be hard for people. And there's, you know, again, what I say with, with those two is that, um, you know, gluten in America has been GMO modified and our immune system, again, is very protective of us and it doesn't want something that looks foreign or harmful. And so it sees that and it's going to mount an immune response to that. And so just taking out the gluten can be incredibly helpful for people, but it's it can be so emotionally hard for people. 
Um, but again, there's so many great alternatives. And when you just start to do one or two things and you start to feel better, it's, you know, you have more energy, you have more, you know, vitality. It's, it's, you know, you sleep better, you're more present, you're more focused. All of those things start to come alive. And what a, tr you know, it then yeah. becomes, you know, not a big, not a big trade off. The, the temptation of something that you know isn't good for you. Yeah, yeah. You know, so can you talk a little bit about the gut brain connection? I know many people probably aren't familiar with what's yeah. going on in the brain and how that's connected to the gut. Yes, absolutely. So again, back to Dr. Gershon, who did this work in the 1970s when he found, you know, not only that we make more than 80% of our immune cells in our gut, we make more than like, well, more than 70% of our serotonin in our gut. And so there's a direct connection between the neurotransmitters um, in our brain and the health of our gut. Mm -hmm. So, you know, part of, part of the depression and anxiety that people can feel, and also a lot of the ADD and brain fog and not focusing, again, when that gets cleared up in the gut, we're able to make more of these feel-good neurotransmitters that have such a direct impact on our brain um, and, and the science behind that is really very solid. And, and, you know, I invite listeners to start to try it because you'll start to feel different pretty quickly with, you know, when you make these changes, yeah. people sleep better, you know, their, their exercises are exercise workouts are stronger. They're able to, you know, do more. That topic resonates me with in a in a big way with me. I, I grew up with severe depression, you know, mm. even as a young child through my teenage and, and, and younger adult years. And I, I took lots of medications to deal with that. But yeah. same thing with the skin issue. When I changed my diet, like uh, all of that drastically went away. And, and yeah. it was another aha moment and, and what really inspired me to start Native Path. Um, and, and help get the information out that the solution in, in fixing these things can be a lot more simple when you just address the food and start yeah. taking care of your gut. And we're just not trained like that as doctors. I mean, I had, we got, I mean, it's, it's maybe marginally better now, but I mean, maybe two hours of nutrition in medical school and the rest was mechanisms of drugs, you know? I mean, there was, you know, physiology and anatomy and other things, but it really is, you know, what medication is going to fix this? And it's, it's just really doing such a disservice to the innate wisdom that we have in our body. And when we, you know, support our biology um, and, our, and our mental health and our emotional health, then we, we do really well. We are, we are designed to be healthy. And there's just a lot that's gotten in the way and, and a lot of, you know, not talking about, you know, how, how important nutrition is and how important connection is and community and purpose and, and all of these things that, you know, we're not talking about people to people with in, in the doctor's visit. And, and, you know, the root word of physician is to teach. And, and that is, you know, really what I want to inspire my profession to get back to is that, you know, there, there are foundations of health that we know and if we can start to educate people about this we're going to change our population for the better yes yeah <laughs> yeah i think um i think this time with everything that's happening on the planet right now is, is really forcing us into looking at that you know um i view what's happening in the world right now as is very much a symptom of the, the lack of health that we have we're more unhealthy now than ever we're more vulnerable to a virus or these external diseases than we've ever been before. Um, that's what the unique yeah. thing is. So it's forcing us to look into how, we, how we're living, how we're eating, how we've been moving, how we've been relating to each other. And there's on the other side of it, there's a possibility. There's a possibility of aligning ourselves uh, with, with nature, you know? And great, yes, yeah. I, I really do see the silver lining in this very challenging time is that it is opening up the discussion of where are we, going wrong and how can we do this better and mm -hmm. and so many wonderful minds you know present company included are coming to the table and rising and saying 
we have some solutions here. We have some answers that, that aren't all that new. You know, these are things that we've been seeing, you know, your story. And in my, you know, practice, I see this all the time where we greatly change people's health for the better doing these very simple things. Not always easy, but simple. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Yeah. You've talked a little bit about, uh what to eat, but I've also heard you talk about the importance of just how we eat our food and how we relate to it. Can you can you talk a little bit more about that and why that's important? Uh, I've, and this is one that I catch myself all the time because we're sh and you know and now with gosh everyone homeschooling and the pressure and we're doing more than ever and and we go so fast. So when we are inhaling our food literally, you know, and not mindfully sitting down and, you know, um, connecting with our food and with others, then that, so when we're, we're in that sympathetic state, fight, flight, or freeze. Mm -hmm. And when we're in that state, we literally, we don't digest our food because from an evolutionary standpoint, we actually feel like we're running away from a tiger. And when that happens, you are shunt you're 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 shunting all of your energy away from your digestion to your leg muscles to run mm -hmm. and so so it it becomes physiologically ne necessary for us to actually take the time to slow down take a breath and eat mm -hmm. and and you know i really there's there's studies that are done and it's not to discount the importance of what we talked about before in, in making healthy food choices, but communities that eat together in a, in a mindful way um, have shown that with the same, you know, they can eat the sometimes the same bad foods as, you know, a culture that doesn't eat mindfully together, but they have decreased disease risks. And, and it's because physiologically they are creating a place where they're supporting their digestive process more. Yeah, that's such an important thing because a lot of people out there that could be eating perfect foods, they could be doing all the workouts, they could be doing all the yeah. things, but yeah. they're they're still they're they're in a hurry. They're yeah. breathing really shallow. You know, they're they're having dinner watching like a, a war movie or something. Yeah. And their body, all the all the goodness in that food, they're not absorbing it very well. Yeah. And, and I'll add something else that's a new phenomena in, in our time. And, 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 you know, it's a blessing and a curse to have all this information about what's the right thing to eat, right? There's paleo and there's vegan and there's, you know, all these different uh, Mediterranean. And so I have a lot of patients actually that have a lot of fear around eating because they're like, am I eating the right, you know, even though, so I heard keto, someone said paleo. And so I'm eating all this paleo, but I'm not sure if it's right or I'm, so that again is is really important and again it that's another reason why it's really you know th there's there's a lot of information available but it becomes really important to work with a practitioner that can specifically listen to you to help you understand what is the best diet and what are the best food choices for you so that again you can start to feel really safe in being like oh right this is what my body needs this is what's nourishing me and i don't have to be in that fearful place when I'm eating. That is a, a huge area that, that is so important because you're getting into belief. And I know yeah. you, you're a fan of Bruce Lipton and the biology uh, of belief. Uh, so, um, yeah. it, but you could, you could help in some, and, but if, if someone's believing that food is bad for them, then their body won't be in a state where it can actually receive it, even though it's the most exactly. healthy, nutritious food in the world. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So um, why should people um, get testing if they don't have any gut symptoms? You know, if someone's not having the gas, yeah. and everything seems, seems yeah. like it, but why is yeah. getting tested for gut important anyway? Yeah, well, just again, back to what we said before is because it's the foundation of our health. And so even if people, that I, I do a stool test, on, I recommend it on everybody. People sometimes decline it, but because it's so foundational and it gives us so much information early on. Again, we want to listen to the body when it whispers, not when it screams. And, and before it even is whispering, you know, we want to know what's going on there. Are you digesting your food? 
you know, are you, you know, that, that can give us signs, you know, because again, a lot of people, they're just accustomed to living in that fight, flight, or freeze, and they're not even aware that they may be anxious or hurried when they're eating. And so doing the stool test can set, can show me you're not making any digestive enzymes to break, or you're not breaking down your food at all. So we need to look at them and it, you know, it gives me information to help them, but it also helps people understand more what's actually get, get them in touch with what's happening in their body. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing I like about getting a test like that is it serves as a baseline. You know, someone can get that test and then, and then there can be a plan of action and say, Hey, let's, let's eat these type of foods instead of those type of foods. Let's be a little calmer and eat this way instead of that other way. And let's come back and test again. And there's a bit of a motivation. I know that I get when I do those tests and I I get really motivated to be healthy because I want to get a good score on the test. You know, it kind of puts me in the place of like, I'm thinking about my health, my health and and I'm feeling good health immediately. So it's a proactive test. It is. And it's so nice, exactly like you said, to correlate that. I'm feeling better and wow, my tests are getting better, you know, and it's, so it's not just the stool test. We do, you know, more advanced blood work too, looking at, um, you know, inflammation in the body and in a, a lot of tests that again, your, your conventional doctor isn't doing. And early on, it's like, whoa, this, I had no idea that this was out of balance or this was going on. Nobody's ever looked at that before. And then it becomes very rewarding for people when they start to make these changes and see their blood work, you know, six months later, just become normal and healthy. Yeah. Another thing I was thinking about there was uh, when you mentioned conventional tests and how those norms for conventional tests are really built up compared to the normal population, which is healthy. Right, so you could be in normal levels, but the normal population isn't healthy. So it doesn't necessarily mean you're healthy if you are in normal ranges, right? (laughs) Nobody's really talking about that. (laughs) No no one's talking about that, but it's so important because, I mean, I know my mom, for instance, so many times she's like, everything's good, I went to the doctor, they can't find anything, nothing's going on. I'm like, yes, they do. And and what are they comparing that normal level to, you know? it's so important to go to to go deeper like what we're talking yeah. about so. yeah like vitamin d is a great example um, there's there's a range of 30 to 100. Mm-hmm. and so i have patients that come to me with a level of 31 and their doctor's like <laughs> <laughs> good and he's yeah. like no there's a there's more of a functional range you know more of an optimal range it's probably closer to you know 50 to 60 that you know is necessary and again vitamin d is is vital for our immune function also you know low vitamin d can lead to depression and insomnia. you know it really acts like a hormone in our body so that's a that's a really important one and and thyroid's another is, is another one you know there's these ranges and and western medicine says all good um and it only looks at maybe one part of it um and there's there's a much bigger picture and, a, and an optimal range that we want to have for health. Want to get to, yeah. And I'm, I'm so glad you brought the vitamin D because um, it's one of the frustrations I've had the whole time with this situation we're in right now is we, we haven't been told enough from our health leaders to, to go outside and get some natural sun, to start yeah. supplementing vitamin D. Yeah. Um, and yeah. I, it's, it's it's going back in the wrong direction. We need to move people forward into being pro-health rather than like thinking about disease all the time. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, well, in in addition to diet, what are some of the things that you recommend for gut health that can improve uh, the intestinal lining and integrity of the gut? Yeah. So, so again, you know, besides getting specific information from the stool test of are they low on certain strains of good bacteria? Is there parasites or bacteria or viruses in there that we need to treat? Um, But again, then just fortifying the gut health. So one of the staples is collagen, 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 collagen. It's just so good, again, at at sealing and and fortifying the integrity in your gut. Um, Having a good probiotic. um, You guys have a great one that I really like. I use a lot. Um, Zach Bush has has a product called Ion Gut Health that also is super good at increasing the the health of the gut. Um, And then... There's a, my, you know, I'm always 
listening and finding like the latest new um, uh, product. And again, they're not new. It's what's what's new about products that I find is the synergy, the way that they're putting these ingredients together. Um, and so there's one from a company called Physica um, that's Hepatogest. So it not only helps fortify the gut, helps with our digestion, but also helps with the detox in our liver that's, that's vital, again, for our ability to assimilate nutrients and get toxins out through the gut. Mm, I so love those, Yeah, those are some really my, my current favorites. Yeah, I mean, it's really simple, right? It's like stop eating the foods that, that are harming you, start eating some good foods, take some collagen, repopulate the gut with, with a good probiotic, yeah. and, and then get some tests that might be needed to help you along the way to kind of come back and see if you're making progress. Yeah, and what's great about the collagen, too, is that it actually helps not only fortify the gut, but helps with digestion because of the way it holds on to acid and water. So we need we need acid to break down, you know, harmful bacteria um, in our in our gut and to, to break down the food basically to digest proteins. Um, and when we don't have enough of that, when we're in that sympathetic fight, flight, or freeze, we lose acid content. So having the collagen in there is is really helpful in digestion as well. That's so important. A lot of people think that collagen is just going to help with their joint pain. Or it's yeah, gonna, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah no, it's so, so much more. more, so much more. So important, yeah. So how do people get these tests or get started on both finding out more what is causing their symptoms or creating disease risk specifically for them? So um, you can absolutely come and work with me uh, at the Center for Whole Health in Los Angeles. And we do telemedicine so we can see people across the country. Um, I have a great team. I have a wonderful PA, Karen Jacobs, and a naturopathic physician, Dr. Porgy. Um, so we would love to see you either in our clinic or virtually. Um, but also, if you can find somebody locally, it's if you if you have somebody in your community, that's always the best. Um, so people can go to the Institute of Functional Medicine website, and they have a link that says find a provider and you can type in your um, zip code and a list of you know trained functional medicine doctors come up or um, naturopathic uh, doctors associations in your area um, or even what i recommend too is um, acupuncture colleges um, have really wonderful resources and you know any any of those um, organizations can start to get you some information that will help you start to listen to what's happening in your body a little bit more. Beautiful. Yeah, I love seeing so many options pop up. Yeah, yeah you know, there's, yeah. yeah. Also, I want to mention, I put a link up here um, for people to click on and they can learn more about how to sign up for your patient community. Oh, and if you, great. Yeah, if you click on that link, um, you can see an email address where you can email your team and get more information or ask any questions. Um, there's a phone number you can contact. You can also fill out a patient form um, to sign on and be a part of uh, Dr. Don's community. But I highly recommend, you know, following Dr. Don, getting in contact with her, learning more about her services and, and these amazing tests that you can offer people. Really, really important. Thanks, Chad. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> and also, uh, since we've been talking about collagen today as a way of saying thank you, we also put a link up there um, where you can get a discount, special discount on our Native Path collagen. It's only available for people in our community, so definitely take advantage of that. Um, but yeah, anything else you want to add to today's conversation, Dr. Don? It's just been a, a joy and a pleasure to talk with you. And, and yes, I invite any of the listeners to, to reach out. I'd be happy to answer your questions and would love to, to help in any way I can. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, Thank you so much for your time. This has been uh, an incredibly valuable interview. I um, hope it's the first of many more to come, but I'm, I'm excited to uh, just to just to share this information with our audience and, and let them know there's other options. And so many people have been dealing with all these issues. They haven't found the root of the issue. And I'm yeah. so grateful that, that you're here. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, there's, yeah, and with there's so much hope. There really is. There's yeah. Really, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Well, thank you everyone for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section here. We'll, we'll do our best to answer your questions. Um, otherwise, we'll see you next time. And Dr. Don, thank you again for your time. Thank you, Chad.